You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. We have got some lawsuits going on here in the state of Washington. We've got we got lawsuits. We got the grocery industry suing the city of Seattle. We've got this whole big um, online identity situation with our Washington State unemployment security with the whole Nigerian scandal, just money going here, money going there, and attorneys are getting paid because that's who gets paid in the lawsuits. Sorry, attorneys out there, but that's the truth, right? You guys get paid no matter what, unless you're going on a percentage basis, and yeah, that's a risk. Before we get going here, my name's Sean Reynolds, and thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I'm a real estate guy. I own a couple of real estate companies, but I cover the news that you want to hear. All right, let's jump on into it. Grocery industry sues Seattle over a new $4 hazard pay law. Now, the, the very best thing that you can do for businesses and was that they've been, you know, going through the whole pandemic thing, just throw more taxes on them. Just throw more taxes on them in the form of a $4 hazard pay law. I'm kind of of the opinion, you let the free market work all this stuff out. Government shouldn't be in there to meddle and say, oh, no, you guys got to pay your workers more because we say so. No, I'm not into that. That's not my thing. I'm pro business. I'm small business owner. I come from that background. Not big on a $4 an hour pay raise for grocery stores. That's pretty random. We'll find out why in a second here. Two Northwest grocery industry trade groups are suing Seattle over the city's new law mandating $4 an hour pay raises for grocery stores. The lawsuit filed Wednesday, yesterday, in U.S. District Court in Seattle. Poor attorneys that have to go to the district court. It is a, it's not good. It is not good. It looks like, I don't know, a scene out of Road Warrior around the courthouse. I mean, seriously, if Road Warrior had tents in it, that's what it would look like. I mean, it's rough. In this lawsuit alleges the city's law interferes with the collective bargaining process between grocery stores and unions. It kind of does, doesn't it? Never mind that whole union and your employees that you represent or the stores that you, you know, your employees are. You just got, you guys just got to pay. You got to up that pay four bucks because that's, that's how we're handling things in Seattle. Just, it's so invasive to me. All right, getting back to it. Uh, the, the, the lawsuit alleges the city's law interferes with the collective bargaining process between grocery stores and unions and also picks the winners and the losers by singling out large grocery companies. It's kind of like our tax Amazon. It's kind of like the podcast I just did, which was, you know, we're going to do a billionaire tax. Anything over a billion dollars of your net worth, we're going to tax at 1%. Man, it's going to roll the dollars in for Washington State. That is literally a bill we have going on in Washington State. So many things we can talk about in Washington State that you're like, what? Huh? And the, the more I'm covering this stuff, the more I'm hearing people, other people, you guys who are in other states, and you're going, yeah, sure, I'm glad I don't live here. And other people going, where are we all going to move to? Which state? Are we going to Texas? Are we going to Florida? Where are we going to? Because if this nonsense keeps going, which I think it will, we're all going to need to go somewhere else, right? I mean, there's so many cool things about Seattle, but this kind of stuff, yeah, let's just randomly jack up four bucks an hour just because, I mean, because. Seattle's law passed last week, went into effect Wednesday. The Northwest Grocery Association and the Washington Food Industry Association filed their lawsuit the same day. Unfortunately, the council's unprecedented ordinance, this is unprecedented. You you guys got to jack up all your pay to your workers because we tell you to. The council's unprecedented ordinance, it's unilateral action. That's the because we tell you to part. And unwillingness to work with the grocery industry has left us with no other option than to file a lawsuit against the city. I mean, Nobody, none of us saw this one coming, right? I mean, I've been following this story and I I haven't really covered it until now because it's like, okay, now it's getting good. Now we're getting the pushback. Now we're, we've got these unions going, what? No, we're suing you. This is nonsense. Tammy Hetrick, president and CEO of WFIA, which is the Washington Food Industry Association, said in a prepared statement, "Um, there's no other option. Lawsuit, we're suing you. You have been served. 
The law applies to large grocers, those with more than 500 employees worldwide, and stores larger than 10,000 square feet in Seattle. It mandates a $4 an hour pay boost for all workers in retail locations. And that pay boost must remain in effect for as long as Seattle remains in a declared civil emergency. I am all for paying people what they are worth, but this takes out any kind of bargaining that would typically go on in a capital in a in a um, in a market like we operate here in the state of Washington. This just ah, yep, you pay more. The lawsuit claims the new law is invalid and unconstitutional for two reasons. Number one, it says it preempted it is preempted by federal law governing collective bargaining and labor practices. All right, so. This doesn't fit in with the federal law governing collective bargaining and labor practices. But City of Seattle, we don't don't worry about federal law. That's secondary. We reimagine and we rethink things here. That's what we do best. No action, just imagining, rethinking. And and, and then doing this kind of stuff where, yeah, let's just do it. Ah, If they sue us, okay, we'll just deal with it then. You know, we'll counter sue, whatever. We'll settle, whatever. And second, this is the second thing um, that it's invalid and unconstitutional. The lawsuit states, the law violates the equal protection clauses of the U.S. and Washington constitutions by treating large grocers differently without providing any reasonable justification for the exclusion of other employees or frontline retail workers. Well... The justification is, we think that they can pay and they won't put up that much of a fight. They're making money. So this applies to the big, big grocery stores. This does not apply to 7-Eleven, the little individual stores, which is a mini mart. It also doesn't apply to grocery stores with under 500 workers uh, in the US. It, It just doesn't. So you're literally just going after I don't know what grocery stores you have in your area, but ours are Kroger, uh, QFC, um, we've got Safeway, we've got Albertsons, you know, you got the big national chains. Um, So those grocery stores, yep, you're gonna pay more. Uh, Trader Joe's is another one. And Trader Joe's, their approach was interesting. Entire country. All right. Four bucks an hour raise their workers. The ordinance arbitrarily and improperly targets grocery store businesses in Seattle for disparate treatment while not requiring the same commitments from similarly situated businesses or conferring any benefits on similarly situated employees. So it's, it's not a fair tax. It's not, it's not a fair um it's, it's not a fair deal to these grocery stores, right? I mean, it's just not. Dan Nolte, a spokesperson for Seattle City Attorney Pete Holmes, oh, this should be good. We will absolutely defend the city's right to see essential grocery workers receive the hazard pay they so rightly deserve. And yet, when we need businesses open, eh, not so much. No, you're a winner, you're a loser. Big grocery store, you're going to lose on this one. Small grocery store, you're okay, because it's over 500 employees. And we think, you know, the odds are higher that if you have over 500 employees, you're going to be able to pay this. You're just going to knuckle under and take it. Well, the unions are saying, "Mm, no, not so much. No, we're not doing this. You have been sued. You have been served. The lawsuit uh, directs blame at the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, which pushed for the law. The law passed unanimously last week, less than a week after legislation was was introduced. So this is just one of those boom, done kind kind of laws. And it went into effect almost immediately. The union sponsored this ordinance, the lawsuit says. The ordinance establishes premium pay standards that, by design or consequence, empower the UFCW, the United Food and Commercial Workers, Uh, or other collective bargaining units to secure a wage rate they could not otherwise have obtained from the employer at a unionized or non-union grocery store. So we're just making them do it. That's what we're doing. We're just making them do it. Anna Menard, a spokesperson for UFCW Local 21, said they were confident the mandate is legal. Well, of course you are, because otherwise you wouldn't have done it. But even if you think it's maybe not legal, you're going to throw it out there, see what happens. Yeah, this, this is what we're doing, but only in Seattle, because 
you know, other areas, not so much, they rely upon the market to kind of determine what pay schedules should be. That's an entirely different concept. And um, nothing that really happens in Seattle and the city of Seattle uh, ties to reality, it just doesn't. We're taxing billionaires, we're talking taxing successful companies, we're jacking up the pay rate for grocery store employees. And I'm not saying I mean, one of my kids works in this capacity for Amazon. So I am not against my kid getting paid more. But this is not the way you do it. But it is in Seattle, right? We see this kind of employer pushback every time we pass workers rights laws. But this one was so unilateral and so quick, we're just trying to trying to fly it under the radar. Let's get this law out there. But it's especially unfortunate in the middle of a pandemic. Are we in the middle of a pandemic? Because all of the stats I've seen, per the major media, pandemic is it's, it's almost over. I mean, back to work people. I mean, the Rona, I mean, the numbers are down. That's, that's allowing everybody to go back to their normal lifestyle, right? You've done a really good job wearing your mask, you've done a really good job staying home. Never mind the stats don't really support all these reopenings. But you know, the economic numbers for the current administration, they won't look good if, if we keep these economies locked down. That's not a look we want. I mean, we already crushed 2020, right? So let's let's not do that in 2021. It's okay, guys, based on the data and the science, you're good to go. Let's reopen. So we see this kind of employer pushback every time we pass workers rights laws. But it's un especially unfortunate in the middle of a pandemic, that these grocery store employers are going to great such great lengths to avoid paying workers. No, they are paying them what the contract says they will pay them. And what about all these other industries not included? Somehow we are just singling out grocery store workers. And it, I, I think so many cases of the coronavirus have come out of grocery stores, because if you think about it, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. Like you can go into Home Depot. And if you forgot a mask, you can get a mask there. But employee has to get the mask out of the, the mask bin and hand it to you with the set of tongs. And then you put that mask on, and then you can immediately go and touch anything in Home Depot, and other people will touch it. So you can't touch your own mask you're going to put on because it might contaminate it for other people. But then you can walk around a, I don't know how big those stores are. Is it 100,000 square feet? I have no idea. How big is a uh, regular Home Depot? Let me know in the comments if you know. But um, yeah, you can just walk around willy nilly pick stuff up and ah, that's okay. I mean, the next guy might get the run off my hands, but we're not worried about him. But those masks over there, whew, you got to protect that action because man, this whole double standard thing here, it's, it's just kind of crazy. It's, it's the road we're heading down. So so much of this stuff, it's like, all right, so grocery store workers, and I think people picking up groceries, Let's be honest, you can pick up an apple, put it back down, might have the run on it. Nobody really, you know, checks, we don't really know, haven't really talked about how much the grocery stores have transferred the Rona. But I bet you it's pretty significant. But what we don't do? Yeah, we don't shut down the grocery stores. We don't shut down big business. We don't shut down Costco. We don't shut down Home Depot. They are deemed essential. Grocery workers in Seattle, they're deemed more than essential because they're getting paid more. And, you know, that's just kind of how we are. In response to Seattle's legislation, Trader Joe's raised pay temporarily for all its employees nationwide. I love Trader Joe's. I'm not sure on this one. Uh, they just kind of rolled over and, yep, let's give them all four bucks an hour. And that's a big raise. So in the grocery store business, margins are super thin, super thin. And if you're the city, city of Seattle, you're just like, oh, our workers over here, worker bees over here, they're not getting paid enough. So we're just going to slide this legislation in. Let's get these people paid some more money and pump some more money into the economy. Because when these people get paid more, they're going to spend more. That's a trickle down effect. Never mind the other businesses that are open at 25% capacity, because that's what's allowed right now. 25% capacity. And yet you've got grocery stores with a tiny little margin open. And now you're just going to make them pay their employees more. What a crazy, it's a scheme by the city. It really is. 
In response to, and so Trader Joe's, they raised pay temporarily for all its employees nationwide, while at the same time canceling a much smaller scheduled mid-year raise. So you're like, all right, here's your normal, okay, we're not doing that one. We're going to give you this $4 for, um, and it's for as long as this is deemed we're in a pandemic. How long is that going to be? Is that going to be like years? Probably. How long are we going to have to wear masks? Probably a long time. Long time. Kroger closed two California stores in response to similar legislation there. All right. They just said, yeah, we're not doing that. This store wasn't doing all that great anyway. Close that bad boy down. So just a just a nutty storyline here from Seattle, but you're kind of used to that, right? I mean, this is this is just how we are. Here's the second one. This is your bonus one. Lawsuit is filed. This is another lawsuit. So this is this is part B of this podcast. Lawsuit because you wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you, right? I mean, you need to be told just like we need to be told as residents of the state of Washington or California. You need to be told what to do because you can't think on your own. The second one is lawsuit filed against California company involved in unemployment data breach. I did a podcast on that big data breach, like 1.46 million people in the state of Washington who were just trying to get their unemployment pay. Hey, got fired. My business is closed down. I need some unemployment benefits trying to get that in their effort to do that anytime basically in 2020 up until December what 10th. If you put your name into that system, all right, probably data breach where they can do some real damage to your online identity. Now we got a lawsuit coming out of it, right? Seattle firm has filed a lawsuit against the California company whose software was hacked and exposed the personal information of 1.4 million people who filed unemployment claims in Washington State. The civil suit against Excelion was filed in King County Tuesday and seeks class action status on behalf of everyone whose information was hacked. So class action lawsuit, everybody's in it together. I'm sure you've gotten those notifications at home. Maybe you bought a product that had a lawsuit against it. Then if you send back in your information, they'll give you a $3 check at some point in time in the next 15 years. That's what usually comes. I've had one where I got I think a couple of grand out of it. But it was one of those mortgage fraud things. I had a mortgage with the company that yeah, they, they pulled some fast ones, apparently. And they had to do a big payout. And um, I got a little bit of money from that. But most of the time, it's literally like, here's your $9 check. We hope you feel better. This has been spread out against all the people. So it's only nine bucks. But you know, we're thinking about you. We are we're reimagining we're rethinking this bankrupt company paying you a little bit of money because they screwed up. That's what they're doing. The data breach came as the state auditor's office was investigating $600 million in fraudulent unemployment claims. Those potentially affected include people who filed for unemployment between January 1st and December 10th, 2020. Includes many state workers as well as people who had fake unemployment claims submitted on their behalf by the Nigerian scandal. The data includes a bunch of stuff. The state auditor's office says it is working with state cybersecurity officials. That sounds important. Law enforcement and others to try and mitigate the damage. And then we talk about the damage. We know what that looks like. It's horrible if, you're, if you've ever been impacted by that. Um, state Auditor Pat McCarthy said the state learned of the attack January 12th after Excelion made a general announcement regarding a security breach. But Excelion said it notified customers December 23rd day before Christmas Eve. Happy Merry Christmas to you. You've had a data breach. It wasn't until late last week that the auditor's office learned what files might have been accessed, McCarthy said. So we know we've got a breach. We don't really know. We just need to string this out for as long as we can. Maybe it'll go away. Maybe it won't. Maybe we'll come up with the right information. But either way, this is not going to, we might even get sued. Ugh. Excelion counters that the file sharing system the auditor's office used is outdated, but they're still charging for it, right? But it, yeah, it's, it's only 17 grand a year, this contract that this company will probably go under for, right? The company declined to comment on the lawsuit because they've been encouraging the company to upgrade to a more secure system for three years. So three years in a row. Hey, state of Washington, don't be cheap. You need to upgrade because 
this this other upgrade over here. I mean, it's always the upsell with cybersecurity, right? You need this better protection because this this worm over here might get into your system and create some havoc. Therefore, you need to upgrade to the super duper plan. I mean, that is just how technology works, right? You need this better computer. You need this better whatever it is, security for whatever it is that you think might be important. Your online identity, yeah, that's pretty important. That's why the company's being sued. Hey, you didn't provide the security that your cybersecurity company said would keep us safe. The company declined to comment on the lawsuit. The auditor's office said it has used Excelion for the past 13 years on a contract worth about $17,000 annually. I bet, ex, um, I, I bet this Excelion, I bet they regret not doing something like, hey, we got to switch you over. But that is always the rub with with this stuff, right? You put somebody on something, they take advantage of that. And then, okay, down the road, oh, that product's still pretty good. We're still, I mean, we're still making 17, 17 grand a year off the state. I mean, it's okay, but we should recommend, hey, you need to upgrade. Oh, oof. Yeah, all those times we didn't go hard on the state to upgrade, it has come back to haunt us. This is this is not good. We got sued. Got to work our way through because seventeen grand that will be spent in a matter of hours by a team of legal counsel. That's just how that happens. That quick. You got a team of lawyers. Some of them working four, five, six hundred bucks an hour. It goes by quick. Before lunchtime, they can spend seventeen grand in fees. So lawsuits just a flying here in the state of Washington. And I know they are down in California too. What would it be like to live in a state where you don't have all this nonsense going on? Let me know in the comments because that's not where we're at here. But I will report it to you as it comes up. And it's coming up all the time, all the time. This stuff is just, you, most of this stuff you just can't make up, right? It's like we had a breach of our security with our unemployment security system on an audit of the Nigerian scandal where they basically took $600 million out of our unemployment security department. Hmm. Yeah. It's what happens here in the state of Washington, right? I mean, we just, we just live with it. We deal with it and we move on and we reimagine and we rethink. It's what we do. It's what we're known for. Hey, what are you guys doing? Don't know, but we're reimagining and we are rethinking. All right. That is it for this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for being here. Love to have you subscribe. If not, do your thing, but stay safe. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.